Sairam everyone. Just to recollect what we were discussing last week. Uh, I think the discussion um, was more around how do we overcome desires? Um, how do we give up all the desires and what are the challenges which we will face and what are the ways in which we will be able to succeed in that? And that's what we had discussed. I will ask sisters to continue from where we left off. Sairam is clear. The five elements, earth, water, fire, wind, and sky, are also my forms. I am the activity in the sun, moon, and stars. When the great destruction comes, I am the force of destruction, and I am the force which constructs again. I am everything from the microscopic to the macroscopic. I am the past, the present, and the future. I am the three regions and the three gunas, which have shaped man and nature. There is no object which is not I, no name which is not mine. Blood taken from any part of the body is the same as from any other part. So too, the divine is everywhere the same. Then Arjuna joined both his palms and with uplifted hands he asked, Krishna, the whole of creation is your form, is it not? Knowledge, wealth, power, strength, energy, splendor, all these are expressions of your glory, are they not? Well, will you not give me the sacred chance to fulfill my life's desire to experience you as all this creation, as Vishwarupa, of the form of creation itself, I plead with you, I pray at your lotus feet. Knowing the anguish of his heart, Krishna replied, Arjuna, I shall certainly satisfy you, but your physical eyes cannot see that glory. The Vishwarupa cannot be perceived by the limited vision which sees and grasps only this nature. Therefore, I shall confer on you the supernatural eye. Now see, he said and manifested himself before him as creation and more. What great mercy, what superb experience. Thank you very much. So as you all uh, would remember, Arjuna had asked uh, Krishna, you know, that he wanted to know which form he should focus on. Though there were many forms and uh, what was the most preferred form, what he would recommend. And that's when Swa Krishna had given various you know, explanations. And now he's going on to explain that what else he is, what are all his forms. I think one of the questions from Arjuna was, tell me all the forms which you take. Uh, so I think Krishna is uh, obliging uh, that request. So I'll stop here and I will open it up for discussion. Anyone who would like to share any thought, please go ahead, Saira. Can we read the Telugu? Ah, okay, yes. Auntie. Saira. <clears throat> పంచభూతముల స్వరూపమైన భూమి జలము అగ్ని వాయువు ఆకాశములు నా రూపములే దట్స్ ఫర్ యు నో యా ఫస్ట్ ఐ థింక్ స్టార్ట్ ఐ థింక్ ఐ థింక్ ఇక లోకమున సంథింగ్ ఇస్ దట్ ఇక లోకమున భూతములు కాక మిగిలిన సృష్టి జాలమును ఏ ఏ రూపమన మనున్నదో అదియు తెలుసుకొమ్ము దట్స్ నాట్ క్లియర్ యా షుడ్ ఐ సేయింగ్ Uh, in this world, not only the elements 
all the other uh, the web of creation in whichever form they are know that as well is that what krishna says panchabhutamala swarupamaina bhumi jalamu agni vayu akashamulu na rupamule is selling the five elements which are the earth water fire wind and akasha space. sky space all of them are my forms surya chandra nakshatram bula endali chaitanya munu nene the sun and the moon and the stars in all of them the consciousness or the sentience which is there is myself pralay kalamuna samasthamunu tanalo laya parichudu mrutyudevitayo utpatti kalamuna puttakayo nene nene ve at the time of the pralaya or you know the final dissolution all the all the everything they merge in me and even the death also is me at the time of creation all that is born that the the creation itself is me anu madulu akhandamu varaku trikala triloka trigunamulandu antayu nene vyapinchi unnanu in the atom from the atom onwards to the this uh, this great expanse of i think universe and the three times and the three worlds and the three qualities three gunas all that is me and i have spread myself pervading all of them nenu kaani vastu kaani naadi kaani peru kaani lokamana ledu there's no object which is not me or which just can contain me and there are no names which are not mine in this world yeah dehamanandali raktamu ఏ భాగము చూచినను ఒక్కటిగానే ఎట్లుండును దేశమునందు ఏ భూతమును చూచినను అందులో సర్వ వ్యాప్తి అయిన నేనే రక్తము వలె ప్రవహించుచుండును అని కృష్ణ పరమాత్మ బోధించను జస్ట్ యాజ్ ద వన్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ బ్లడ్ విచ్ ఫ్లోస్ ఆల్ ఓవర్ ద బాడీ ఇన్ ఎవ్రీ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద బాడీ in that same manner in this world or in this country in every element if you see in that me who is all pervading is flowing within just like this blood thus thus krishna or the supreme lord krishna taught appudu arjunudu రెండు చేతులు జోడించి కృష్ణ విష్ణమంతి విశ్వమంతయు నీ రూపమే కదా దెన్ అర్జున ఫోల్డెడ్ హిస్ హ్యాండ్ అండ్ సెట్ కృష్ణ దిస్ ఎంటీ యూనివర్స్ ఇస్ ఇన్ ఇట్ యువర్ ఓన్ ఫామ్ అందులోని జ్ఞాన ఐశ్వర్య శక్తి బలము వీర్యము తేజస్సులు నీ రూప సారములే కదా ద ఇన్ దిస్ ఇన్ దిస్ వరల్డ్ knowledge all the uh, wealth the power the strength the virility and all the the um, the effulgence are all the essence of your form and they ee anninti sammelanalo unna nee vishwaroopamunu okka pari choopi nannu krutarthini cheyakudada is uh, the you who is present in all these can, can't you not show me that vishwarupa or this all encompassing form once and uh, won't you bless me with that kritarthini yeah means Paat. make me grateful for that anti sariya kritarthini 
Kritartha. Kritartha is a blessed in children. Blessed, yeah, blessed. Uh, Bless me with that. Padamulanti pra. Padmulanti Prartin Tuno. Ani Vinaya Vidayalto Korinadu. I worship at your feet. Thus Arjuna stated with a lot of humility. Apud Parmat Mudu Bhava Arjuna Ni Kori Katapaka Chalintuno. Then the Lord, the Supreme Lord, said to Arjuna, oh, Arjuna, my brother in law. I will, without fail, fulfill your request. Kani, Vishwarupa Dharuda Gunanu, e Prakrutamaina Netra Muluto, Chuda Sadimukadu. But this form of this universal form of mind cannot be seen by this worldly eyes. Chuda Levu, Kanuka. You will not be able to see because of that. I will grant you this uh, vision which is not easily obtainable. Anugrahin Chandino. Chuda Chuda Divya Drishtani Prasadin Chi Tana Vishwarupa no Chopin Chinadu. Then look at this uh, the saying, Krishna granted, blessed him with the divine vision and showed him his universal form. Paramadayaruda in a Paramatma Swarupu Krishna. Krishna is one who is of supreme compassion. That's his form. Yeah, that's it. I think we stop there. Yes, Auntie. Sorry, the, the first line, the Ikka Loka Muna Bhuta Mulu. I didn't get that one. In this world. Well, Ikka Loka means this world. Bhuta Mulu means the elements. Kaka, with, in, except them. Migilina Sisti Jala Muna. Migilina means the rest of the, the web of creation. Shristi's creation, Jala means the web. A Rupa Munananu. Whatever forms which exist, Adi Yunu Telsukomo. Know that all, all of them. Apart from all the five elements, the other things are also in the in the web of this creation. See me there. Oh, okay. Know that I am all of know, them. Yeah, no, know that I am all of them. So we have reached go ahead. Yeah. No, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just sharing my thoughts. So we are where Bhagwan has confirmed supreme natural eyes, and I'm just kind of visualizing how how beautiful that sarupa could be when Bhagwan conferred that super supernatural eyes to you know Arjuna. It's such a beautiful I mean, we have reached at that junction where I was waiting for it. Oh my God, when, when Bhagavan is going to show that darsh, give darshan, just to share my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Okay, I think Sister Shivani is waiting for that. Okay, so sorry, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Sai Ram Brother, uh, you know the Vishwarupa Darshanam. Um, 
at the beginning we learn um, Arjuna is a representative of a human uh, uh, beings right so Krishna is showing him the Vishwarupa Dasan when he reached to that level so I think all the human can see if their state of mind changed to that level. So because he has taken um, Arjuna as his representative, right? What is the Vishwarupa Darshanam? The I'm my I'm thinking like uh, it's a uh, God pervade everywhere, and if you are able to see a uh, God in everything. Uh, then that is what that is everybody cannot see is an inert or living beings everything you have to see that I think that is the Vishwarupa Darshanam I don't know I'm just thinking to myself is that is I don't know is that is right or not because uh, Krishna already said I have chosen him as a representative of humanity right one person so I'm thinking if that is, I don't know if that is right or not, but I'm just thinking. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Arun, you remember that uh, one of the students who was sitting in the car? Yes, auntie. Please to go ahead. You remember the story? Yes, auntie. As far as I know, I'll just say, a student who is sitting beside Swami in the car he was expressing his wish. Okay. Swami. I'm doing my meeting, Siri. Oh. <laughs> um, um, I want to see your Vishwarupa Darshana, Swami, he said. Swami was sitting in the car and then he was traveling. And then he's, you, whatever you are seeing outside is only Vishwarupa. There's, there's a Vishwarupa, which I'm giving you, but you are not able to uh, see and recognize it. That's what uh, uh, Swami said to him. What we are witnessing as the manifestation of that this universe itself is Vishwarupa. His Vishwarupa we are seeing every day, but we don't uh, realize that that this that is uh, Vishwarupa Darshan of the Lord. Saira. Saira, thank you. Anyone else would like to share anything? So, Sairam, brother. So, yes. the based on this one, Vishwarupa, the Lord Krishna expressed whatever he see, the five elements. Apart from the five elements, the knowledge, wealth, power, strength, energy, all is mine. This whole part of my uh, body, so far you can take it as like part of the body. Even if you see Himalaya or even if you see Ganga, everything's mine. So, he wants to prove that one. That's what the Vishwarupa was shown to Arjuna. Then he saw everything, all the rivers, all the people are there, everything there from his body. So that means we are nothing. We are we are thinking we are in the body consciousness. Once we come out, body consciousness. So if we have a devotee of him, then Lord Krishna was saying we can also able to see Vishwarupa Darshan. Thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Anyone else would like to? Yes, Sister Shivani. Just a question. Um, I don't know if it makes sense. You know the line which saying the last paragraph, the Vishwarupa cannot be perceived by the limited vision, which sees and grasps only this nature. So is it, is, does it mean when we see trees, are we not seeing trees or we are admiring them as, as God prevails in that? Limited vision. I, don't know. I, I mean, what vision? I know it's a divine vision. So we see things, we see chair, we see trees. I'm just sitting, you know, outside and I'm seeing, okay, how can I see? I don't see things how they are or I respect them as divine or I don't see them as they are. 
Thank you, sister. I think it's a, I hope it's a question you're asking, is it? Yes, yes. <laughs> want to of that, yeah. Sister Sorry if I confuse. No, thank you. No problem. Sister. Anyone would like to respond or? So yes. on a lighter note, it's like we are going for a 3D movie. You get a 3D goggle, you wear that, you see. Like the way you perceive uh, there, of course, in a 3D movie, you start seeing the depth part of it. So uh, that gives like a different feel of the same vision that we are seeing on the screen. But I think in this case, uh, basically, uh, I, I think like what Brother Dasan was saying, body consciousness, if I don't see a limitation of myself, but see myself in everything and everything in me, that becomes the Vishwarupa Darshan. So if I see the trees, I see, I in, instead of like seeing, like I see God in them, I see myself as a part of that kind of a thing. It's uh, like I've heard a uh, few other uh, people say, like literally like, because the trees are the ones who give us oxygen to breathe and all of that, it is literally like my lungs are up there kind of thing. Because what I'm breathing in and out in a broader sense is coming from the tree. So there is no limitation of my sense being a particular height, this physical features and all of that that comes along with it. But I perceive myself as an extension, which like when I see, I see everything as a part of me. Like Swami would also give the thing that if an ant bites somewhere on the leg, immediately the hand goes and tries to swat it away as if it is one. It doesn't see the leg as separate, the hand as separate and the mind as separate with the thinking but everything. So even as I see the tree, I feel I'm part of the tree. I see somebody walking on the road. I feel everything as a part and parcel of my existence as an overall extension. And that is where the, the balloon bursts. No longer I, I perceive myself as an individual entity, but an ever expanding being. Thank you very much. Sir. Anyone else would like to share that? Sairam, uh, in, in my interpretation, I take this as Swami is telling that the Vishwarupa cannot be seen, it can only be experienced. That sort of uh, interpretation I am getting from this one. Uh, the seeing part, it's only by limited with my eye. I and those things, you know, for those people, they don't have the vision, you know, the external vision, still they experience everything and they internally, they see more than us. That's why, you know, the, the, the external vision through the eyes, you know, the, it's only a little part, but the internal vision or the experiencing part is is the real Vishwarupa. That's why even the disabled, you know, the visually challenged people, they can you know, internally, they can internally experience more than us. And even in our dreams, without having the limited eyes, we experience in everything. And sometimes we will be even more than happier than the you know, the, the external vision, you know, the, the, maybe that sort of thing Swami is trying to tell us here. You have to really experience the Visvarupa, not by seeing, you know, the, where is the Visvarupa I want to see? No, you can't get it. Thank you, Sairam. Thank you, sister. I don't know, Sai Satish. I don't know, there was an incident of, you know, one Swami saying, I will give you Vishwarupa Darshan and everyone ran to. The airport. <laughs> Is it airport? I think you are there, so you can share what happened if you are aware of it. Um, yes, no. so one of um, the evenings, uh, Swami had this announcement 
need that there will be Vishwarupa Darsanam happening in uh, around the airport um, area. So uh, I remember, um, I think immediately after the bhajans or so, the whole Swami also left in the car there and the entire town of Parthi was also going there. There was a huge traffic jam. And uh, Swami, of course, went on to the uh, the airstrip, the landing area there. And he was there for some time. And then, in fact, the whole of Parthi literally was there in, in that place. And then Swami left. And of course, everybody's thing was, oh, they ex expected possibly out of sky the Lord... Uh, showing up in all that splendor and all that glory. But it was, I think, again, the same thing what um, Mani Andi was saying earlier as well. That day, the whole Vishwam or the microcosm of Puttaparthi was there. And I, I think subsequent reflection was more or less that was the Vishwarupa that came to be for everybody to essence themselves in one place along with Swami. But of course, the way people's understanding of that announcement was that they would see some fireworks and kind of a thing where all that, um, yeah, what Krishna possibly had or what they show in movies possibly will happen their life. That was the thinking <laughs> expectation, but uh, I, that was not to be. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, please, Dasan. is waiting for it. Sister Shivani's, I don't know, she's there. <laughs> okay. uh, so, Sairam, brother. Sorry. That uh, the Vishwa Rupa means, in my understanding, brother, based on your exp uh, based on your talks and everything, you can see it when you have the blessing of the God uh, with the uh, jnana and the wisdom. Uh, that's what uh, Swami is explaining here. Not You cannot imagine or anything. With your naked eye, with your uh, uh, blessing, you can uh, see it. Thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Sister Shivani, your hand is again up. Oh, my God. Now it's <laughs> fine? No, again it came back. It's like a blessing you are granting on everyone now. <laughs> she <laughs> blessing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anti Sakti. Yes. And the Baba say, Krishna says supernatural eye. Is that the wisdom, spiritual wisdom? Um, you know, it's, um, I think you see the aunt, I think everyone is now excited about Vashwarupa Darshanam. Actually, Krishna give, himself gives the uh, uh, instru he instructs how we can have it. Because, you know, this entire Vishwarupa Darshanam is in the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. At the end, uh, Krishna tells Arjuna, Look, Arjuna, I've granted you something which normal, not only normal human beings, even the jnanis and the gods are still pining to have. And it is not attainable by them also. But I gave you a glimpse. And then he goes on to say, this can be attained only through Ananya Bhakti. Okay, the last three shlokas, if you read in the chapter 11, so it gives. And in the one of, just after that, Krishna says, Nyatum Drashtum Tatvena Praveshtum Parantapa. You know, he, that's what he's saying. That means you should know, you should see, and you should enter into that principle. Or oh, through that, with that principle, you should enter inside, you know, whichever way you want to be. So this is what Krishna says. <clears throat> I'm reminded of uh, in one of Swami's discourse on Bhagavad Gita. He's explaining what is this Nyatum Drashtum Tattvena Praveshtum. Swami says, I will explain to you. I think I have repeated it a few times. He says, I will explain to you how, what it is in very simple terms. He says, you are like, we are, you are like mangoes. You all like to eat mangoes. And the mango season is here. And you heard the news that the mangoes have come to the market. 
So that means you have come to know that the mangoes are here. Then what you do, you go looking for the mango to the market. So you have to seek and go. And then you go there and you look at the mango. Right away, you are so excited. You know, you take the mango in your hand and uh, you are singing all along the way and you tell everyone, say, I got the mango, I got the mango. But he says that still it's not, uh, it's not complete. Then he says, when you come home and then you put, you know, remove the peel, peel the mango skin and then put the mango into your mouth and taste it and experience it. And it has to go inside you and it has reached all the cells in your body. And then you have that joy. That is a Tatvena Praveshtu. So uh, just as Sister Ananti said, uh, the, we can imagine, oh, the mango will taste like this, mango will taste like that, or the mango will look like this. But um, Swami says, Krishna says that you have to experience it by internalizing it completely through Ananya Bhakti. And then you have uh, uh, only Vishwarupa Darshan. Because the reality is Ananya Bhakti means you don't think of anything other than the Lord. So then that becomes an Vishwarupa Darshana. So you should be able to see the Lord everywhere and see only the Lord. And then uh, that becomes an Ananya Bhakti. But that happens only through experience, as Sister Ananti is nicely said. So we have to experience the divinity, not just imagine that we not superimposing on everyone, you know, Swami, or you know, imagining that Swami is somewhere hidden inside them, but be able to experience. Now, that's my understanding, Saira. Um, Auntie Saku has raised hand. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Uncle, is um, is nyatam drashtam praveshtam? Is it similar to shravanam mananam nitityasanam? Or is there something? Yeah, exactly. And when it says tatvena, does that mean through tatva or with? Tatva means principle, you know, philosophy or whatever. But it also means that you are that. Tat tvam. That is you. That way also you can say. So, so you have to get into that principle. You have to understand that principle that that this are the same. The law, God is one. Praveshta means to enter. Is that enter right? into that principle. Into, so through the principle? Or with that. Or with, Pardon? Yeah, is it with or through or how would you? Tatvena means with that principle, using mm -hmm. that. Okay, through that. Through the realization of that principle, you will see, you will have Vishwarupa Darshan. That you are, he, God is, God and you are one. When you get into, through that principle, you can have this vision. You know, that's my understanding. And of course, in the last verse again, Krishna says, Mat karma krit, mat paro, mat, mat bhakta. Again, same thing. Sangha vivarjita hai. Like that, you know. Sorry. And in that also, he says, Nirvaira Sarva Bhuteshu. So that means you should not hate anything, any anyone or any being in this world. Then, and know that it's all mine. And then you will understand. Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Sai Ram. Tamaso Maj. Jyotirgamaya. No. It can apply to the, this one, right? Yes, yes. <clears throat> yes, Brother Tassan, you have. Yes, so Sairam, brother, the, based on this uh, story, by the mango story, that means the mango is the one God. So you want to study him and you are going to search for him. Then you are buying that uh, mango, that means you are praying or something, you are doing the divorce and everything. Eventually, after the mango uh, merge into the cells and everything, gold and you are same. Yeah, thank you, brother. Sairam, <clears throat> with this finite eyes, we 
we cannot see the infinite. So that's what Arjuna is given this advice. With your finite eyes, you cannot see me. I'm going to give you something divine vision. So of course, if we had to develop that divine vision inside us, it uh, everything, whatever we see, we have to start thinking that it's God, God's creation. And then the whole thing should be internalized. The whole thing, we have to see that special vision. It's not super special vision. It's Nobody is going to give us. We have to develop that vision inside us. And then to see everything is God. Everything is Bhagwan. That kind of, uh, when we get that uh, uh, that kind of feeling in our in our minds, then you know we have achieved something. We have uh, uh, got that um, internal uh, that divya drishti. Swami calls it divine vision. Sire. Thank you very much, Aunty. I think one of the problem we have is uh, we have an understanding, even if we say take Swami, who is Swami? It's a question which we should understand, I think. Because we, if we think, you know, Swami is just, Swami himself says, if you think it is this five, five feet, three inch body is Swami, you will never see Vishwarupa there. So we need to understand the essence of what Swami is. Without that, uh, we will not be able to see God also everywhere, see Swami also everywhere, because otherwise we will be just uh, applying, you know, the photo which we have seen and we like on everything. Uh, uh, you know, so I think the essence of that in this in this verse also Swami has said is that you are the essence. I think that's um, he says. Uh, Saramule Kada Ni Rupa Saramule Kada. That's what Swami is. Yeah. You are the essence of all this. So we need to understand the essence. And the essence is the one which is the same everywhere. And once we are able to experience that essence, just like the mango juice, uh, uh, then we will be able to see, experience that juice everywhere. I don't think in the tra translation it comes through. It just says expressions they're saying, but Swami is calling it Ni Rupa Sara Mule Kada. Expressions of your glory. Yeah, that's what they have said, Auntie. Yeah, yeah. Sara means also, you know, juice, you know, essence. Essence of it, yeah. The sentence where um, Krishna is saying Mrityu Devata you, he's saying death is also me. Yes. Yeah. And at the time of creation, creation itself is me. Is that what that says? Yes. Swami says, Utpatti Kalamuna. That means the time of, at the time of creation. Puttuka yu nene. Puttuka, I mean the birth itself. Birth itself. Yeah. The birth itself? Yes. Pralaya kalamu, utpatti kalamu. Dissolution and creation. Both he is. The nene. Yeah. The, the translation says construction or something like that. Yeah. Well. Construction? What is it? They yeah. say when the great destruction comes, I am the force of destruction mm. and I am the force which constructs again. That's the translation, auntie, for this. Where, where is it? In English. Okay. Is it there? Yeah. Yes, it's there. Sun, moon, and the stars, when the great destruction comes. Oh, oh Ajay. Yeah, first paragraph. Ah, great destruction comes. I am the force of destruction and I am the force which constructs again. Yeah, so which is what this translation of this is. 
pralaya kalamana means at the time of the great deluge stamastamanu tanalo laya parichedu prithivai devatayu one who you know brings everything inside him or merge in one who makes everything merge in him that is me and utpatti kalamana puttukayu nene at the time of uh, so utpatti kalam means i don't know whether it's creation creation it's called creation. utpatti kalam and he when here you know with construction it's I better know. it's not uh, we can see is a dissolution and creation those two we can, we can understand like that yeah what is it means that which emergence. comes out huh? but no, i was saying emergence for Ut emergence Utpati. emergence is a better word i guess utpatti is thank you sir Nenu kani vastu kani. Like without me, there is no object. There is no object which is not me. Which is not me. Nenu kani vastu kani. Nadi kani. Peru kani. Name which is not mine. There is no name which is not mine. There is no object which is not me. In this world, sorry, aunty. Mm -hmm. Chal, and is it Munandu means country or world? I think in the, in, in the, uh, in the yeah, when you say country, I think it's it also means land, yeah. all the, the lands. Word, the whole world you can take it as Desha Munandu. I think the translation doesn't say anything. It's so to the divine is everywhere the same, you know, something like that. Mm. But yeah, Swami says, I uh, flow as blood in all these things, like blood in all these beings, which is, you know, which is present in this entire universe, world, you can say. And uh, Swami would say that as Raso Vaisaha. Mm. Yes. So, okay. I'm the essence. If everyone is okay, I can move. Uh, one question, Uncle. So, is having the Vishwarupa Darshan, is that like the same as liberation? <laughs> I think it's yeah, maybe it's liberation because once you identify that you and I are one only, you can have that experience, you know. Liberation, I think, maybe a precondition for that. Yeah. Okay. When you're liberated, you will have that vision, I think. That's the way I understand. I don't know about the others can also say. In the when in the Bhagavad Gita, like doesn't um, Arjuna get finds it frightening, right? At one point, and he tells him to stop. Yeah. Because <laughs> saying it's unbearable. Even with the Divya Drushti, he could not stand that. As far as liberation is concerned, Kalyani, immediately after Arjuna got this vision of uh, uh, Vishwarupa, I don't think he was liberated there. No. <laughs> he had to do his duty as yeah. a Kshatriya. He had to fight the war. <laughs> you know, all these things, what Krishna is trying to tell him, you, I have already killed everyone with whom you are going to fight now. They are already dead. And, and that's what in Vishwarupa he shows. Uh, but at the same time, he reminds him that you are a Kshatriya and you have to do your duty in the war field. That's his, but he immediately was not liberated. Auntie Saku. Yeah, Please. yeah. I, my question was answered now because uh, he was not ready. He asked, he begged 
And so uh, Krishna gave the, uh, he says, your physical eyes, you will not be able to see my inner reality. For that time, I have to give you supernatural eye, sight. And then he created uh, the, he showed his whisper room. So that doesn't mean that he was liberated at that time. That's what I wanted to say it, but uh, Auntie Mania said, said it and you said it. Thank you very much, Aunt. Sister, Sister Aruna. Hi, Amrava. Until you have something, you have like an attachment or connections, until that time, you cannot enjoy the visual Rupatashram because you are pull, your senses are pulling to that side. So until everything under come and as a one thing, as you have said, Dhananya Bhakti, you won't able to experience the Vishwarupa Darshan. And that's the uh, way I am understanding it. Thank you. Just sharing my thoughts. Thanks. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Um, like in the Vedas, like before the Bhagavad Gita, like anywhere, is there like a, any mention of a Vishwarupa? Rudra means Vishwarupa Darshana. Okay, so Antar, Sarva Antar Yamitvam. You know, that's uh, the sense of Rudra. But, you know, I, I think I should see the thing is, um, I think it's a personal experience. Maybe if you don't mind, maybe I will explain. I will uh, describe. See, I was in my second year. I was maybe studying plus uh, 11th. Uh, I was doing my 11th standard. So I was, what, 16 years old at that time. I just joined Parthi. Um, there was Akanda Bhajan going on. Um, you know, I, I sat through the night. And in the morning, I was... Uh, sitting in the mandir veranda and uh, Swami was walking around. Suddenly this thought came to me, you know, Swami, you know, you are avatar. We have come here and we know that you are divine. You know, there are many rishis for, they did penance for so, so many thousands of years, many lifetimes, and they didn't get and we have gotten it. Maybe, you know, we so at some level you think, you know, you are above, you know, those people, you know, if Swami is God, he's there, every day you're looking, day and night, so you should be above them, you know, that's, you know, human nature to think like that. And um, so, you know, I was, and Swami was standing about 30, 40 feet away, and I was, you know, I was thinking, you know, all night I didn't sleep, I didn't eat, you know, so I am sitting, I didn't move from there. So I thought, we have reached you know, we have reached that stage. You know, all of us think, you know, we have seen Avatar, so you know that Swami is God. So I was sitting there and I was in bliss. You know, we imagine that is bliss. You know, and uh, Swami is just walking. Swami was 30 feet away, 20 feet away, 10 feet away. And I saw Swami, I had a darshan, I am going to have now person. And you know, this is ultimate. These bhajans are going on, you know, at, at least I have realized that you are God. So, you know, there can be, you know, this is enough, you know, that kind of thinking. Swami was about three feet away from me. And I'm looking up and, you know, I, I just couldn't, uh, it's almost ecstasy. Then the next thing I know is somebody hit me on the back of my head. The reality is from three feet away, then I saw Swami, I had just completely forgotten. Maybe I lost consciousness or whatever. No, it's not really. I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> Swami woke me up by hitting my head at the back of my head. And I turned, who is this person? I'm ex enjoying this ecstasy and somebody is hitting me. And I turned back and looked, it was Swami. He said, you buffalo, you're sitting here and sleeping. Go to the hostel and sleep. <laughs> so he, he made me get up and walk all the way to the hostel. And the entire, the entire, all the students were laughing at me. 
and I walked all the way back to the hostel and slept. For a few hours, I slept after that. Then I realized, you know, at that day, I realized, see, God, out of his compassion, gives you some knowledge, a glimpse. But uh, we should, we should, that is, that is something which we should strive for. He gave us a sample. You know, just the way we go to Costco or somewhere, you know, they give us samples. Just because we had had the sample, we can't say we got the product. You can taste it, but it is just uh, an invitation to go and buy it and make it your own. It's still the shops, you know, they just give you taste, passerby. So that is what Swami did. And that's what Swami did, Arjuna, Krishna did to Arjuna also. Maybe we did something to deserve that sample also because we went to Costco, you know. It's like that we went to Swami and Swami gives a sample. So we have got the sample, but the sample is not the whole thing. We have not made it our own. Uh, so I think that was the case with Arjuna also. So even for us to understand that Swami is divine, that understanding itself was given by Swami. You know, many people come and see Swami and, you know, they don't see anything. When he says that he's just a guy, just some fellow is making, doing some miracles, doing some magic and go away. But we were fortunate. Let's go and go, Uncle. Right. So, go. Right. Uh, uncle, go first. Sai Ram, I'm sorry. Yeah. I talk loud. Sorry. Uh, what I want to say is in the Sai Tapavanam, yes. there are different stories, and one story is about a young person from Sri Lanka. He was a he was a Catholic, I think. And he he went for a course to Chennai and he had he saw the the form of Kali being worshipped there. And so he fell in love with Kali and he and he wanted to have the vision of Kali. And he, in fact he converted himself from Christianity to a Hindu, and he didn't want to go back to to his uh, homeland. And uh, what happened was his mother was was praying and seeing for she was upset because he changes religion, and then to become a Hindu, and she was not very happy. And so this fellow also on his trip he went to Puttaparthi. And he was sitting in uh, in uh, Prashanti Nilayam. And uh, Swami came and asked him, what do you, do? he knows Swami. I, Swami came and asked him, what do you want? And so he was mesmerized and he said, uh, he said he, he didn't say much. Then Swami took him to the interview room and uh, he told Swami told him about all the things he have in his life, and then he gave the uh, darshan of Mother Kali. So whatever he wanted to know about Mother Kali, he got a vision of Kali, and after that Swami said, "Now you go back to your back to the same world where you were before, and go to your family in uh, Sri Lanka." That's what he said. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, thank you, Uncle. <laughs> Arun, you were saying something. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I said. You know, I, we all got some blessing from Swami to understand that he's divine and we had some glimpse of him. But I think then we had to work on, you know, making it our own and internalize it and make it. Uh, uh, so that that's a long path. Nyatum, trashtum, you know, tatvena pravishtum. He gave us a taste. That's all. And uh, but we have to work and really earn it. Uh, so that's it. Sairam Sai Satish. No, it's uh, it's not about the sample outside. It's about ample inside, right? It should because be ample of it inside. It should not be the sample from outside. There should be ample of it on the inside, I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> a bit of it, like you're not rely 
dependent on a source like means every time you're not dependent on somebody giving you the experience about you having it amply inside so you can tap into it anytime yeah yes yeah but that glimpse that he gave arjuna if it was frightening then why would he want to pursue that or like <laughs> is it like if we if we try to go too fast or on this spiritual journey like we may not be ready we might find it disturbing or something see i think i think i think when arjuna said i think he said he was not scared he was it was unbearable for him uh, he could not take it in it was just too much for him so i think he realizes that he was not yet ready to have it properly you know it was something which he could not handle at the physical level maybe at the emotional and mental level also uh, so i think uh, that's why you know so but i think he realizes that's the only way he can reach krishna he can identify krishna he will properly understand krishna and i think he was really interested but i think that's why krishna gives him the less you know the teachings what what he should do to be able to get to the point where he'll be able to uh, the way i understand it's kalyani it's like you know if you everyone wants to learn to drive cars okay uh, but they you learn and practice a little bit and you start driving on the highway you will definitely get scared okay so because of that do you give up driving you you know that driving is sex, it's it's exciting you know it's nice it's useful it is scaring it's scary at the beginning but you know the value of that also so i think arjuna was in a similar situation uh, he realizes that he has to work on it and he should master it and when he is ready i think he will enjoy it so i think that's why he was not turned off by that scare of course there are people who stop driving and that's a different story and there there are people who want to drive so i think in life everything is like that if you know the value of it i think we will pursue in spite of uh, the scariness because we think we master the skill you can do it it's just like swimming the people are scared to swim but once you swim there's no nothing more enjoyable than swimming in water and so so there are certain things which are scary but Uh, they are enjoyable also sahira sahiram sai sitesh and i just wanted to add like swami would show like in kulwanthal he would say like bulbs are many and current is one so in that context i was just going to say that each of us have a wattage like 5 watt 25 watt and so on and uh, i think arjuna's point at that time was maybe he was getting to that 1000 watt stage but then when you go to vishwarupa darshan it is the wattage is very very high and in that time it it, it becomes like is the recipient conducive enough because now suddenly arjuna is to experience what krishna is showing as the vishwarupa darshan so in terms of what arjuna has to reach that level obviously his cleansing and all of that has to really get to that stage and here krishna was just giving a sample of that current dose and that itself shook him which i think makes him realize of course he sees the oneness but then he realizes there's a lot more that he has to reach to get to that because subsequently also arjuna comes back at a later point in time where anugita comes so he's not yet fully gone there where he can experience so it's about has he become that pure channel through which the whole uh, surcharge of current can flow through so i think maybe in that context it says uh, it comes as unbearable but then they also say when when the absolute is realized the body drops away as a leaf in 21 days so in in that context the absolute cannot be contained within a frame and that is where that kind of a thing being unbearable because the body get shattered the mind get shattered and what remains is the formless absolute so in that context you could uh, uh, relate to what is unbearable being 
Thank you, Sai Satish. Brother Tarsan. Yes, Sairam, brother. The Vishwarupa Darsan. For an example, if I say I have phone, I have some $10,000 in my pocket, then I have to show that one. Same thing Lord Krishna was saying, the water, fire, earth, sun, moon, everything within me. And the knowledge, uh, and knowledge, wealth, power, everything within me. So Arjuna is not kind of believing because still not started to fight because he had the ego consciousness. I, I, I. So when he saw the uh, Viswarupa Darshan, he saw everything within him. So uh, he can see sun on the body, he can see moon, he can see water flowing, he can see all the earth, everything, the people are dying, people are born, you know, everything, he can see all the action, he can see it in the Viswarupa Darshan within Lord, not outside. Then other example is, I am within you, I am around you, I am above you. This concept is very nicely teaching from the Viswarupa Darshan. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Is there anything to discuss or are we? While at this point, there is one subtle detail which seekers have to note. The Vedas, Shastras, and Puranas, besides many scholars and saints and others who have a right to speak about such matters, all describe God as Sarva Vyapi and Sarva Bhutantaratma, that is, as present everywhere and as the inner reality of every being. On the basis of this, some people argue, if he is so present everywhere and in everything, why is he not seen by everyone? For all such, the reply is, how can the physical eye, composed of the five elements, see beyond the five? Nothing can illumine an object that does not reflect light. But a flame illumines itself and sheds light all around. God is self-luminous. He illumines all. He is beyond nature, which is but a manifestation of his glory. So he can be seen only by the eye of wisdom, an eye that can be won only by his grace. Hence, worship of God is an essential part of sadhana. He who fails in seeing himself can never succeed in seeing others, in seeing anything outside him. Engage yourself in sadhana that will secure the grace of God. Through that grace, the jnana netra, the eye of wisdom, will be granted. He is easily reachable by the path of devotion. While experiencing the vision of God in the universe and the God as the universe, Arjuna was shedding tears of joy. O oh, Almighty God, all the gods, Brahma, the Creator, all the sages and saints, all the manifold beings and objects, movable and immovable, oh, I see every one of these. I see all, oh, from your terror creating face, flames of splendor emerge and spread to farthest distance. How I wish I could know the meaning and purport of this formidable form, Arjuna exclaimed. Maybe Auntie will read the Telugu also, I guess, Auntie. Veda Mulu, Shastra Mulu, Purana Mule. Auntie. Uh, uh, one sentence before this also. E Samyamuna. It's not there? Yeah, E Samyamuna Sadhkulu Gurtin Chavalisina Ati Sukhma Saram Shmu Okati Vicharin Tumo. At this point in time, one of the points which one of the subtle essence has to be ex uh, examined, which the sadhakas or seekers should understand. Vedamulu, Shastramulu, Puranamule, Kaka, Ane Kamundi, Anubhavagnulu, Panditotamulu, Ishwuru, Sabavyapi, Sarbabutan, Taratmani, 
తెలుపుచునే ఉన్నారు వేదాస్ ది శాస్త్ర ది స్క్రిప్చర్స్ ఆల్ ది పురాణాస్ నాట్ ఓన్లీ దెమ్ మెనీ పీపుల్ హూ హావ్ ఎక్స్‌పీరియన్స్డ్ మే देयर आर मेनी పండితస్ పండిట్స్ దే సే దట్ ఈశ్వర ఇస్ ప్రెసెంట్ ఎవరీవేర్ ఇస్ పర్వేడ్స్ ఎవరీథింగ్ అండ్ హి ఇస్ ది ఇన్నర్ ఎలిమెంట్ ఇన్ ఎవరీ బీయింగ్ సచ్ దస్ దే హావ్ బీన్ స్టేటింగ్ కాని దీనిని ఆధారముగా తీసుకొని మరొక తెగవారు ఈశ్వరుడు సర్వవ్యాప్య అయి ఉండిన ఎందుకు అందరికీ కనిపించడు సో బట్ మెనీ పీపుల్ టేక్ దిస్ as a basis of their argument and say they say if he, god is present everywhere if he is so present why no everyone cannot see this see him ani vadinchu chundaru atti that's the argue atti avishwasa vadakulaku idi sariyaina samadhanam for such people who do not have faith and argue this is the correct uh, answer emana pancha bhutatmakamu ee chakshuvulu pancha bhuta sambandhamaina vastuvulnu maatrame choodagalavu yeah the eyes which are composed of the five elements they can only see other objects which are made of these five elements అప్రకాశ వస్తువులు ఎంత ప్రకాశవంతమైన ఎంత నిబిలువైన సువర్ణ రత్నములైనను ప్రకాశింప చేయజాలవు um they cannot make other things effulgent ji aunty ha aprakasha vastulu that is uh, things which don't have the effulgence right cannot right. illumine others oh yeah and we just say things without effulgence whatever effulgence they may contain hmm enta prakash prashantam correct enta panchabhut sambandhamaina vastulu maatrame chudaga that is finite eyes can see the fire fine yeah, things only so i think the translation says nothing can illumine an object that does not reflect light that's uh, she is asking what are you asking kalyani yes uh, so i think when you were translating you said the things without effulgence whatever effulgence they may contain like how much ever yeah. valuable so swami says aprakasha vastuvulu that means yeah. the objects which are without prakasha without mm-hmm. a full light illumination in the prakasha vanta maina means whatever effulgence someone whatever it may contain in the viluvaina suvarna ratnamula nainanu all the jewels and you know gold prakashimpa jeye jalavu so if there is something which is without effulgence in this world even things like gold which have effulgence in them okay gold and jewels and gems have effulgence in them but they will not be able to uh, they cannot make the other things which are without light to uh, 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 emit light so gold they... if you take gold and you can't see everything with the gold you know you know gold is capable of shining gold is incapable of making anything else shine i think that's the meaning i get aunty chari aunty they cannot reflect that light which others can be seen with that aprakasha vastula so even though gold has got some light or some um, precious stones may may have some light but they cannot illuminate others they may be shining but here he says swami says aprakasha vastulu that means totally there is no light is it aprakasha vastulu then which which are incapable of emitting light you know, but i think the translation says hmm. they cannot reflect light you know reflect the light yeah so is it talking about two things like aprakasha vastu and also some things that do have some effulgence like gold and jewels yes so both of these things they cannot 
make other things like uh, effulgent. Aprakasha was Tulu Yenta Prakasha Vanta Maina Yenta Vilavaina Swarna Ratamulanu Prakash in Pazalo. No, no, I think we have to take this way. Only Aprakasha was Tulu, those who don't have that illumination, um, that effulgence, they cannot, they cannot illumine others. Yes. Ah. Other uh, Ratamulu. Deeper so, move. Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So, Kalyani, Swami is equating things like uh, this is my understanding, and can correct, like gold and gems and all, they may contain some effulgence. Okay, but they are Aprakasha Vastu, means they are, they, they cannot emit light by themselves. That, that uh, is, okay. Okay. they contain light. But they cannot emit light. So there are many things. For example, a wood will have fire in it, but it cannot make the fire come out. Okay. So things like that. So everything in this world contains some of these contain a lot of light in them. Okay. okay. But the thing is, by themselves, they cannot make anything shine. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And themselves also shine. You know, in darkness, even gold is there. You cannot see. You may see some trace of it, but you really cannot see gold also in darkness because it's an aprakasha vastu. Though it has prakasha vanta, it is you know it is filled with light. So, if, for example, if you shine light on a gold, it will shine back very well. Mm. Okay, but there are other things which will not shine. But even things which can easily shine when light is shone upon them, by themselves they are incapable of making anything else sh shine. That's the way I understand. So, is Swami referring to like our body, mind? Those, those are all the, even though we might have a very clear mind or whatever. And exactly, we we okay. cannot see the the real truth. The mind is in, even though it's capable, it is also needs the light from you know buddhi also. Swami says the light of Atman has to fall on it for it to function. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it's okay. capable of, so it's all Prakash Shavanta. I mean, it's capable of analyzing and understanding and so all that. So I think it's similar to that. Yes. Okay. So Aprakash Vastu, Swami is saying is they are not totally without any uh, effulgence. They they have their own effulgence. They, contain, they, they contain effulgence, but, but they are not but they, they effulgence. Cannot, they, they cannot emit to others. Yeah, not Swayam Prakasha, you know. They cannot on their own emit light. Yeah. yeah, next sentence is, yes. we have to have grace of God to bring it out. Yeah, Swami, in the next, if you read the full paragraph, then I think things become clear. Yeah. Deepamu Swarprakashamai Tannu Tanu Tannu Tanu There is a comma there. Itara Vastuvalnu Yetla Prakashimpa Cheyano Cheyano Atulane Bhagavan Tudu Swayam Prakash Kudanu, Nana Surupudanu, Aprak Putrami, Angutache, Athanini Gnana Dritiche Matrame, Chuda Nagunu. So Swami, very no. nice in Swami's experience. Swami is saying, a Deepa. lamp, a light, a flame of light, it is capable of emitting light. So Prakashamai, it also makes itself seen and it uh, itself have light. And it will also uh, show shine light on other things also, and make them be seen. Okay, in the same way, God also is a swayam prakashu. That's he is self effulgent, self -effulgent. and he is jnana swarupa, he is who is a form of knowledge of jnana, and his is is uh, a prakra, a pra a pra Means he is is not of the world, you know. He is not from this prakriti of nature, or you can say unnatural. Also, you can say because of that supernatural. So because of that, atane ne jnana drishtiche matre me chulo. So only when you possess this vision of jnana, only then you can see him. Yeah. Okay. So. That. So even if you're intelligent and this and that, 
if the jnana drishti is not there you cannot see god because you are in the our uh, mind or intellect is incapable of emitting light because it is aprakasha vastu okay because people can't see you know even you cannot comprehend as long as you don't have jnana drishti so this is what swami is trying to explain why people are unable to see god everywhere అట్టి జ్ఞాన దృష్టి కూడాను స్వయముగా కలుగుట దుస్సాధ్యము సో ఈవెన్ సచ్ జ్ఞాన దృష్టి ద విషన్ ఆఫ్ జ్ఞాన ఆన్ ఇట్స్ ఓన్ టేకింగ్ యు నో అపియర్ ఇన్ కమింగ్ అబౌట్ ఇస్ ఇంపాసిబుల్ యా ఈశ్వర అనుగ్రహము వలనే కలుగవలను ఇస్ ఓన్లీ త్రూ గాడ్స్ గ్రేస్ ఇట్ ఇస్ పాసిబుల్ టు గెట్ దట్ జ్ఞాన దృష్టి అందువలన ఈశ్వరోపాసన అవసరం బికాస్ ఆఫ్ దట్ ద ప్రే వర్షిప్ ఆఫ్ ఈశ్వర ఇస్ ఎసెన్షియల్ అది లేని వారికి అన్నీ లేనట్లే పీపుల్ హూ డూ నాట్ హావ్ దట్ డోంట్ హావ్ ఎనీథింగ్ తనను తాను చూడలేని వాడు ఇతరులను మాత్రమే చూడగలదు ఏమీ చూడగలదు ఇఫ్ అ పర్సన్ కెన్ నాట్ సీ హిమ్ సెల్ఫ్ వన్ సెల్ఫ్ హౌ కెన్ సచ్ ఎ పర్సన్ లుక్ అట్ అదర్ పీపుల్ ఈశ్వరానుగ్రహమును పొందగలిగినట్టి సాధన చేసిన జ్ఞాన నేత్రము తానే అందించగలదు ఇఫ్ ద గ్రేస్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ టు అప్టైన్ అండ్ డూ సాధన దెన్ ద ఐస్ సైట్ ఐ సైట్ ఆఫ్ జ్ఞాన విల్ ఆన్ ఇట్ సోన్ విల్ బి గాడ్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ విల్ గ్రాండ్ దట్ టు యూ Yeah. It's possible for God to grant it to you. Okay. Atanu bhakta sulubdu. He is easily attainable by devotion. Accessible by devotion. Yeah. Vishpa, Vishpa rupa manu chocha arjunu. I think I think. Auntie, yeah. okay. Should be. Oh, yeah. yeah, please go oh, ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Oh, I think yeah, it's yeah, there. Great, please. Great. విశ్వరూపమును చూచు అర్జునుడు ఆనంద బాష్పములు రాల్చుతూ ఇట్లా నేను అర్జున హు సో ద విశ్వరూప దర్శన్ హి వాస్ షెడ్డింగ్ టియర్స్ ఆఫ్ బ్లిస్ అండ్ హి స్టేటెడ్ దస్ పరమాత్మ సకల దేవతలను సృష్టికర్తి అయిన చతుర్ముఖ బ్రహ్మను సమస్త ఋషులను నానా స్థావర జంగమాది భూత సమూహములను చూచుచున్నాను oh supreme lord i am seeing all the dev- all the gods uh, the one, the brahma who is uh, the four four headed uh, four headed brahma who is uh, creator and all the rishis and all the various uh, uh, plants and you know creations and this ent- all the bhut all the bhut all the spirits beings um i'm seeing all of them yeah sentient and insentient stavara jangama oh, stavara oh i see mm-hmm. stavara jangama na sentient and insentient and ah ma stavara is, is uh, sentient oh, movable immovable ah movable immovable yeah abba bhayankaramaina nee momunu velupadu mantalu tejassulu samastha jagattunu vyapinchi tapinchu cheyuchunnavi oh my god you know abba <laughs> i don't know how to say that oh my sai you know uh, such a, you know scary your face will what this this uh, fire is coming out of velupudu fire, fire, you know, fire is emerging from your face this effulgence um it is just spreading everywhere it's, it's empty universe and it's so um it is burning every everything you know heating up everything ee bhayankaramaina ugra roopanu telisukonna koruchunnanu ugra roopam ugra roopamunu telisukona koruchunnanu i am i am this this fear you know fear striking uh, terrible form i want to understand this that's so i request you that i want to understand 
Let's serve Arjuna says. Till he is looking at the Vishwarupa Darshana and asks me, I don't know this <coughs> form. I want to understand what it is. What is the purpose of this? Sounds. Permittable form. So it's like, uh, Kalyani, it's like, you know, taking a very, ro in the, you know, scary roller coaster still people get on. Arjuna was like that. Okay. <laughs> Some uh, people don't, don't want to get on, but Arjuna <laughs> wants. Here, I would like to say, tell you, Arun. Yes, a Auntie. A prakasha vastu vulu. Yes. There, is a, there should be a comma. Yenta prakasha vanta maina, yenta viluvaina, suvarna ratna. So the suvarna ratna mala, it all the adjectives belong to that ratna yes, mala. Exactly. Uh, so here, aprakasha vastulu, the no effulgence, the objects which don't have effulgence can't yes. emit that light and illumine others. Yes. That's how we have to take it. So whatever people have, Swami is saying, is aprakasha vastu. You know, when people say we can't see God, so we we, we don't see. have we don't have that effulgence in us. Yes, so that jnana drishti is the only one which can grant us that yeah. effulgence. Yeah. Sai Ram, I'm just kind of thinking and no offense if any Valvika's guru is here and myself is a coordinator, but I'm thinking here, we teach our kids and ourselves, okay, do good, see good and all those things. But what I am grasping from here is, yes, we have to do all those good things, but teaching ourselves and kids devotion and faith and until his grace is there, I can keep doing whatever I'm doing. It may, it may, you know, I, I, it might boost my ego. I'm doing all of that. I should rather focus on my sadhana of praying to Bhagwan to grant that vision, the wisdom in me, because without that, I can keep doing things as a machine until have that because there there's no progress no no change in me i might do things mechanically until i'm taking a sadhana of bhagwan please grant me that wisdom grant me that vision what i need so i'm just thinking that should be our main overarching goal in all ss in ourselves to put faith and devotion in kids yes do do whatever you have to do, but devotion and faith is key to your spiritual program. Just to share my thoughts. Thank you very much, Sister Shivani. I think I think unless we understand that the goal of teaching SSC children is devotion uh, through anything, with whatever means, yeah. we are, that has to be taught. Because once that is taught, everything else will come flow from that fall in place. It's so simple. Yes. It's just devotion and yes. faith. Just yes. praying to him. Whatever yes. the flaws I have, Bhagwan, please correct and it will be magic. It's just that's devotion and faith. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm hearing from here. It's so simple. Very simple. <laughs> Very simple. But if you miss that point, everything is lost. It's, it's a, you know, just to extend, sister, you know, we Lots of our children go through Balavikas, but how many of them come for any devotional activity? If you talk to them, they'll say, no, Swami, we are just doing Swami's work everywhere. We are seeing Swami everywhere, and then that's it. It becomes even empty words to that extent. No, even, even my daughter, actually, it's surprising, I'm going to say, she has gone through Balavikas the other day. You know, she was saying, and I asked her, when she loves singing bhajan. So I said, you love singing bhajan or you love singing for Bhagavan? And she was quiet. She was quiet. Because she loves going every Thursday, playing harmonium. So I said, is it the singing part or singing for him? And after a month, she said, I don't know. I don't feel anything. I said, you have gone through Baldikas. And that's exactly, I don't know, Bhagwan may have put words in me. I said, you I can't help you now. You have gone through 13 years of Bal Vikas and still you don't feel about Bhagwan. 
you have to just pray to him to give you that wisdom because I can't give you any more now. So, and Uncle, I was just going to ask, it's hard enough to try to cultivate devotion in yourself. Like, how do you do that? How do you cultivate devotion in someone else? Very simple. Swami has already said, you know, if you cannot see it in you, you can't see it anywhere else. Many people say we see God everywhere. We can see Swami, but have have we seen Swami in us? Is it a continuous experience? I think that's a question we have to ask. <clears throat> because again, devotion is the same thing. If we have such devotion, there's a remote possibility, you know, others may also catch it. But if we, we if we don't have it, there's absolutely no way no one in the world can catch it from us. Aprakasha was too. Then we have Prakasha. So I think we have to cultivate ultimately, and I think that's all. And then the rest will be all, it's all in Swami's hands at that point in time. The reality is, you know, we read the stories of great devotees and right away we're inspired in, with devotion. You know, they are, they are able to emit that devotion. We can get a glimpse of it. Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a taste. Why? Because they were filled with devotion themselves. So I think ultimately that's the, I think, if we do not know, but you know, we usually spend time, what are the five techniques we have to use? And you know, then we have a curriculum, lesson plan, but at the end of each lesson plan, has the devotion been expressed? It's very, very important. Without that, uh, I think even doing seva, Swami says, see me in the people who you serve. Mm. Okay, so how, are we seeing Swami in the people who we serve? I think all that is very, very important. But, you know, we say, oh, we packed some food and sent it. Somebody will go and deliver it. If we think the Swami is there in that people, person who is receiving, do you think we will just send it to, through somebody else? Or should will we go personally and think, sir? A lot of difference. Yes. Uh, if we think that Swami will be present at the place of service, we will be there, dressed appropriately, as if Swami is there, feel His presence, sing His name, and then do service. Then it becomes a real seva in the Satsai organization. Without mm -hmm. that, it is just uh, we will wear anything, we'll have casual conversations, and we just do some seva, and we say, "Oh, we did seva." and take a few photographs. <laughs> That's what it has become. A very sorry, very sorry, sad state of affairs. But I think it's very, very clear. And I think thanks, Sister Shivani, for just pointing out. I think that's the reason we are seeing this. Vishwarupa Darshanam is we can go and have a glimpse of the Lord in the, you know, the people who we serve. That's the starting point. Uncle, uh, if we if we really thought they were Swami, we wouldn't just give them a sandwich and go home either, right? Yeah, we take them go. home with us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Repeat from your sister. I know. If what we really you... thought that that person was Swami, even like why would we stop there? We wouldn't just go in person, give them a sandwich, and then go home. <laughs> like we would take them home with us, you know. But mm. but that, I mean, I feel like that's so hard to do. Like. But, even by so Kalyani, even while you are giving a sandwich, you can you can feel that is Swami who is taking. It's okay, Swami. Mm -hmm. Swami can have anything, whatever with love, whatever you offer, Sairam. Kalyani, only if, if they want to come with you. Sister Shivani was about to say something, then she decided not to. Uh, brother Thasan has been waiting. Yeah. Sairam, Sairam, brother. So a lot of people have doubts about the uh, Viswarupa Darshan. He said, whatever we see, everything is a Viswarupa Darshan because he's part of the God. The reason we are not seeing is that uh, we have to find out who we are first. We have to find, once you find out who you are, then you can see the rest of the items. That's what Swami nicely explaining about the, uh, the light. The, if, we, if we take the firewood, it can, it can see itself and it can give the light. Same way God. 
So once you find out yourself, who you are, then you can see other thing, everything the same. Everything same, Atma. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Kalyani, to comment on, you know, we feel, feel like taking them home. The reality is when you know that you are also divine, the other person is also divine, um, you don't need the, the person to come with, come with you to see that that person is divine. You cannot even limit also. At the same time, along the way, you, whoever you see also will become divine. You know, so I think it is an attempt to learn this rather than, you know, and then you have to bring everyone. Yes, you can just. No, give I was them about to think that. Yeah. <laughs> you can just give them the address and say you can come. <laughs> First, you have to so, make sandwiches for everyone. <laughs> I guess then you start seeing things with wherever they are, they are perfect. You don't need to pick them, or you don't need to pluck flowers. You don't need to do anything. Everything is perfect wherever they are because you see divinity or divine in them so you know it's it's the world the vision gets everything is perfect there's nothing wrong even bc is burning it's just you know he it, this is his okay there okay sorry a question in the previous paragraph he said i am uh, destruction or i'm the source of whereas we say whatever is happening in nature it's our own reflection Man is destroying because of whatever they are doing. Isn't it? It's contradicting. Does it make sense what I'm asking? Like, what I believe, whatever we are experiencing now, uh, flooding, fire, you know, destruction everywhere. And many times, um, either it's, it's I created or, you know, over discussion, we say it's all man-made, how man is overusing nature. Our man is destroying nature. But in the previous paragraph, we learned that Swami is saying, I am that destruction. Sorry, I'm going a little backward because it's like from. I think, sister, we have destroyed time today. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm so sorry. It's 4 30. <laughs> so maybe Bhagwan will give me the answer. I think I also forgot the time, but I think it's a good question. So we will start off with uh, discussing what you asked yeah, in the next uh, session. Uh, but it's uh, because once we start this, we will it will be a raging fire, you know. And so, <laughs> so discussion. So okay. we will stop here. But I think it's something for us to think. Uh, is this discussion man caused or is it God? Mm. What is our role in it? What do we do? Uh, how do we deal with it? Um, how do we respond? I think these are questions we can discuss. Very nice question, thought provoking. But I think we will pause here and uh, continue next week. I pray to Bhagwan, give me that wisdom to understand. Saira. <laughs> and if everyone is okay, we'll close with Samastha Loka. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu. Samastaloka, Sukino of Havantu Samastaloka, Sukino of Havantu Om Shanti 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 Sairam, one announcement, please. Uh, one okay, Sairam. Sairam, one announcement, please. Sai um, tomorrow. Uh, Monday early morning, 6 o'clock, we are having the Nahara Sankirtana. Uh, that is, is in Millican Park. It's from 6 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Uh, we encourage all of you to join for that. Um, I don't have time as uh, Brother said about this Nahara Sankirtana. Already, um, it's, uh, Swami has given a lot of emphasis on that. So please join for this Nahara Sangeetanam. It's tomorrow at 6 a.m. Millikan Park. Thank you, Saira. Saira. Thank you. Thank you, Saira. Saira.